Hi! Welcome back to Blackjack! I actually managed to get things working with uh, some light in the room. <laughs> it's funny because usually I really like it dark, because, yeah, sensitive eyes and all. Anyway, so, uh, what I'm thinking is that despite me being in a much improved mood, we are just gonna get straight to the death battle. Now, like I promised you last time, today... <sighs> Well, like five minutes ago, five minutes later, we are uh, also going to be talking about another Ronma one half character. This time, we are going to be discussing Ryoga Hibiki. And as we learned last time, there's the spring of whatever. And obviously here we see that Ryoga turns into... Let me bring up a little picture of his pig self because it's freaking adorable. This is Peachon. And he's in love with Ronma's fiance Akane and she doesn't know that her little pet pig Peachon is also Ryoga. You know, it's adorable. Anyway, Ryoga is rarely seen for a very long time because, you see, he's a world wanderer. He has traveled the world dozens and dozens of times. And why? Because the man has the absolute worst sense of direction you will ever find in your entire life. I should say boy, he's like 17. You know, like like pretty much all the other main characters. <laughs> um, Ryoga cannot even follow directions or maps or even people pointing in a straight line. He is told, follow this road straight ahead. He went straight, even when it curved around a mountain. He, he jumped off the cliff and ran through the forest below because he was going in a straight line. Turns out his pet dog has to take care of herself because his parents and, gosh, I think he has a sister. I don't even remember if we ever see her. They have the same problem. So consequently, Ryoga is prone to depression quite a bit. He is very emotionally fragile. He's also very hot-headed. But when he can focus, he can strategize like the best. He uh, can overwhelm three powerful martial artists and a sorcerer in one hit. Let me see, did I get the image of that? Oh, weirdly enough, I didn't. But he's much slower compared to his rivals. And why is he so slow? Well, it might have something to do with the fact that that backpack of his weighs several hundred pounds, and so does that umbrella. If I remember right, the umbrella weighs about... Oh, I think it's like 50 pounds. But yeah. His bandanas and... Ah, uh, good lord. Oh, come on! Stupid program. I wish I could just drag and drop. It'd be a lot easier than having to reopen outputs or source all the time. His bandana, and you see he wears a black belt around his midsection there. He can use those as weapons. They, like, how do I even put this? They're like metal, and it's very strange, and it's anime, what can I say? <laughs> it's, you know, it's animation. They pull the animation bullshit. Now, Ryoga has a tendency to blame others for his problems, but he also learns from others. He is primarily self-taught, uh, unlike Ranma, who has studied under the um, Anything Goes School of Martial Arts, even though that is basically um, whatever bullshit his father comes up with. Ranma can, or Ryoga can use the breaking point technique, taught to him by Cologne, the old crone that you see right there. It targets the destructive pressure points on objects. It cannot be used on humans. It can apparently be used on living things. 
he because he developed a version that works on wood. He can explode trees by touching them. That it won't work on animals. However, the training for it, which was essentially slamming into things finger first, has made him a defensive wall. Also, you know, remember last time I showed you that picture? Oh, come on. Media file open, come on. Remember last time I showed you this picture? Just because the breaking point technique can't be used on humans doesn't mean it can't be used against humans. Yeah. Ranma basically had to learn the chestnuts roasting on an open fire technique. I don't think he learned it specifically to f counter Ryoga's technique, but he's definitely used it to do so. What's interesting is that Ryoga didn't actually uh, come up with his uh, ultimate technique himself, nor did he learn it from a specific martial arts master. See, what happened is one day he was stymied by a, um, a collapsed tunnel. And there was a road worker who came up and used... the Shishi Hokodan to, ch to cut through the earth itself. And what Ryoga has to do for it is tap deep into his depression. That's right. He has weaponized his own sadness. When the, uh... Ah, come on. Come on. No! Stop it! The Shishi Hokodan, Shin Shishi Hokodan, uses his heavy depression, which, again, deals with air pressure. It turns it into a projectile of chi, or ki, or whatever you want to say that cracks the earth simply by existing and can knock out people who are only grazed by it. You see there, Ranma is taking it full on. However, both the Shishi Hokodan and the Shin Shishi Hokodan can be defeated in a very unusual way by cheering him up, making him unable to use his depression. What the heck? Is it because I have a glass here? No? It isn't. You guys see those sparklies on me? What are those sparklies on me? Anyway. So, who could possibly go up against the uh, umbrella-wielding manic depressive? Well, for that... We have, because, you know, you have to have a signature style, right? And for that, we have Okuni from Samurai Warriors. She's based on Izumo no Okuni, the founder of Kabuki Theater. Her umbrella is a weapon as well as a dancing prop. Nah, she can spin it around and it will come back to her both as part of her dance and as part of her fighting style. She's graceful, she's kind and caring, and may not even be human. And she may not even be alive. The recent games have gotten creepy with her. And uh, even... Uh, even when she was in uh, Pokemon Conquest, fantabulous game, you guys need to play it. It has its faults, but it's still very much worth your time. She's a bug trainer. She had a Larvesta. And uh, she hung around with Nohime, who is a ghost master. So. so, just how graceful and kind is she... 
Magoichi, another warlord, was about to kill his greatest enemy, and all she did is glare at him, and he stopped. She keeps her word, no matter what. She enjoys cheering people up. Her dance is part of that. The real Okuni uh, initially started out developing theater and dance as a fundraiser for the temple she worked at. And this carries through into this fictional version. Uh, she's somewhat boy crazy in uh, Pokemon Conquest. She actually leaves the plot after deciding to go find some <laughs> find a boyfriend. <laughs> Possibly echoing that the real Okuni just kind of up and disappeared. It's said that she ran off with her own in and Apparently, historians believe she lived another 40 years, so hey. She did have a lot of enemies, though, but yeah. And, uh, you know, she's, you know, caring, kind, etc., etc., and she's been known to. Uh, this can't be right. Accompany people to the afterlife. Yeah, because you see, there is another side to this little sweetheart. She. I remember when I said she may not even be alive. That's because she, in recent games, has been indicated to be a kind of not-so-grim reaper. She has been shown standing in flames, inviting people to come with her to basically goodness knows where. And then they will disappear. But you get the feeling that she does so out of kindness. She's very capricious with her allies. Even the people she's closest to never know what she's going to do next. And if she's wearing her personal item, her dancing shoes, her battle performance is boosted. Now, the thing about her battle performance is that, well, Here's her ultimate technique. It doesn't really have a name. It's her Musou attack. It sends her umbrella spinning just wildly around her. It can be used to make her invincible, not necessarily um, because of her own powers or whatever, but because it forms this impenetrable barrier. I should be gesturing with this hand a lot closer to me because I am not used to how this camera is laid out. It forms an impenetrable barrier around her. I don't know what happens if an enemy ever attempts, attempts to attack her from the top or from under the ground, but I don't know. I assume they would ca caught up in the wind that is picked up by the umbrella. It's never really come up in canon, but I think it would be safe to assume that there would be at least some resistance there. Like if someone tried to shoot her or something, a bullet would be blown away or... I don't know. She can use her umbrella, kind of like Princess Peach, to briefly float. And she does have a slight little weakness, and that is that um, strikes with her umbrella um, are slow. She is a very slow character because she has to open and close her umbrella each time. Obviously not in her Muso attack, but when she's doing a strike, it's basically like she uses it less like a baseball bat and more like, oh goodness, I don't know. I guess it would be somewhat like a cross between a baseball bat and a rifle where you have to load it every shot. <laughs> so, yeah, she's extraordinarily slow. Uh, in fact, she's one of the slower characters in the game. And, oh god, in the first Samurai Warriors... She had a very ridiculous voice that was very slow and very high. Excuse me, sir, do you require assistance? But you see, her want to help people and cheer them up is what I think would make her a lock-on for winning this battle. 
Isi Ryoga's Shin Shishi Hokodan can only be used if he's depressed. And who could be depressed with Okuni around? She would make him smile. She would do a charming little dance, do the whole, you know, balancing the ball on top of the spinning umbrella and all of that. And he would crack a smile and she would drag him to the underworld. It would pretty much be a lock in her favor. But like I said, um, actually I didn't say it, but as can be assumed from the fact that it would be a death battle, um, it would be, you know, a little farther on than that, especially because she wouldn't go into it knowing that he's depressed. She would see that and just be all, oh, sir, you seem like you could use a smile. <laughs> oh, I've got you now. Would you like to come with me to the underworld? I don't have a choice. No, you really don't. And I think that's how it would go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only one of these that I think would actually, um, that I could tell how it would end up. Uh, the other one I have, uh, the other one I have coming up next has an obscure Pokemon character who only showed up one time versus one of the most popular comic book characters in the world. Who could it be? Well, I mean, you're probably going to tell because you're just going to look at the titles, but you know, who cares? I will see you in a couple minutes.